Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. And perhaps this is your very first time to be tuning into the broadcast. I say a very special welcome to you. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. That's the last chapter. Verses 15 and 16 are our focus again today. So if possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, please and also get something on which you can jot some notes. Not only will you be able to jot notes from the broadcast, which I think will help you be able to review later on on your own as you open the Bible and just want to let the Spirit of God further teach his word to you, to your soul himself. That's one of his roles as the indwelling Holy Spirit of believers. But with that pen and paper handy, you'll be able to jot down our contact information that will be given at the end of the broadcast. I have a free gift I want to give to you. I'll talk about in just a moment, but let me lead into the Bible study this way. The story surrounding Jesus' trial and crucifixion has Jesus in part before Pilate. Now, Pilate knows Jesus is innocent, but it's politically correct to let him be found guilty. So, Pilate allows an innocent man to be brutally treated and put to death. Now, let me change gears with you here. Recently, we have found that every time a Supreme Court nominee is brought forward and questioned, we see an almost replay of Jesus' trial from this respect. Sometimes innocent people are allowed to be declared guilty for political gain. Pilate turned to Jesus and he said these words, What is truth? Too bad he didn't let Jesus answer the question. I'm saying all this because today we are looking at a portion of the Bible that helps you and I know that you and I have truth. We have the truth source that does not go out of date, nor will it ever go away. Our truth source is the written word of God. We got it through the means from the living word, Jesus, giving it to us. And that's the whole process we're talking about today. Stay tuned. Get your pen and paper out. This is important stuff here today. A moment ago, I mentioned about a free gift I have for you. Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. And I want to give to you a free gift containing one each of all of our English Bible Tracts. Now, that word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to an evangelism tool, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. There's only one plan God gave whereby people can be saved from their sin. So there's only one gospel message to tell, but we have over 40 gospel tracts, each one coming at the same message from a different vantage point. For instance, the one in my hand right now is entitled, A Would-Be Suicide. A Would-Be Suicide. This track, I believe, becomes more and more important because of where our own society is headed. This is based upon a true story. A man named Luther Cook is about ready to commit suicide. And uh, as he's having his last meal with his gun in his pocket, he sees a 16-year-old girl do something that just startles him, that starts a conversation. And part the conversation says this. Luther Cook says to the teenage girl, where did you learn that custom? She looked at him right in the eye and asked, have you been born again? 
Well, he was astonished at her question, but he knew what she meant. He said, when I was about your age, I made a profession of faith in Christ. She says, but mister, it isn't a professing Christ that saves anybody. You must possess him. And then it goes on, and Luther Cook does receive Christ. It becomes a great gospel servant. Here is a great tool. You need it. We have more and more people coming to Christ through this simple gospel track called A Would Be Suicide. It's just one of the over 40 tracks in that sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information, or you can just go to our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot org and order the sample packet there. If your Bible's open, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 says this, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction." I've been using four words all beginning with the letter I, like in the word Indiana, to help me walk through verses 15 and 16. And yesterday I used the word identification, and that word simply says the fact that Peter has a comrade in ministry, and Peter identifies that comrade as the Apostle Paul. And still yesterday I also used the word inspiration. That word is the word used to describe the process God used to give us the Bible. Now, these two verses here are focused on the fact that Peter states that Paul, the Apostle Paul's writings and his own writings are inspired. He says that they are of equal authority to the Old Testament scriptures. And we also saw yesterday that Peter knew that God was using him and Paul and the other New Testament writers to be God's penmen to write down the Word of God. Now, the broadcast yesterday was really important. It was a vital teaching time, and if you missed it, please go to our website and listen to it. It's really that important. But now I come to my third word, beginning with the letter I. It's the word insightful. Insightful. Verse 15 says that Paul and the other New Testament writers got wisdom to write down the Word of God. Then verse 16 says that some of the things written are hard to be understood. Now, I'm going to answer two questions between today and tomorrow. Hopefully, you're able to hear both of these. Question number one I want to answer is this. How did God give this wisdom to the New Testament writers? We're going to deal with that today. Question number two tomorrow will be this. What does it mean when it says that some of what they wrote is hard to be understood? Question number one is this. How in the world did God get the word of God out from himself and into the lives of the writers so that they could write it down? I think a good starting point for this is to know what Revelation 1 1 says, Revelation 1 1, here's what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ, listen now, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Stop right there. While this verse obviously speaks pointedly about the things in the book of the Revelation, it also tells us the source of all Bible writings. Here are the facts. Facts number one is this. Scripture had its source in God the Father. He gave it to the second member of the Trinity, God the Son. God the Son used the Holy Spirit to give it to the human writers. Revelation 1, 1 says the human servants got the word from Christ, the second member of the Trinity. Now, add to this what we saw back in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, where we are told that the Holy Spirit moved on the human writers to put onto paper that which the Father gave. 
let me add another text. It's the Gospel of John, chapter 14, the verses 9, 10, and 11. There Jesus says to Philip, and I'm reading now, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. This verse agrees with Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. But then let me add this, still in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 13, 14, and 15, there Jesus tells the 11 disciples, because Judas is gone now, he says this, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Because of God's very careful, very meticulous process and protection, he can say, God can say that his word is perfect. He says that not one jot or tittle shall be lost until all is fulfilled. In 2 Timothy 3.16, familiar verse, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Now, by that little word, all, we can know that the entirety of the Bible, the complete Bible, is equally inspired. And we can also know that every single word of the Bible and every part of each word is inspired, every jot and tittle. God promised to protect his word so that nothing of Scripture will be nor can be lost. Now, while I realize that there has been an ongoing debate over the ancient Bible manuscripts for a decade, and it's going to continue, let me just be upfront by my personal statement of saying this, that I hold that the text known as the received text or the textus receptus is the protected word of God. Now, you just need to know that there's a whole lot of very good and godly men and women who disagree with me on this, and I don't part company with them over this matter, but I thought it just best to state up front where I'm coming from when it comes to the word of God. All right. What in the world are you and I supposed to take away for our lives today from this time here in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16? Here's the huge takeaway for you and I. You and I have the absolute assurance that we have the word of God in our hands when we hold our Bible, whether it's in English, French, Spanish, Russian, whatever the case may be. We have the Bible, the most reliable book from antiquity compared, it outshines every other ancient book. Nothing has been lost preventing us to know God and his will. Nothing has been added which would prevent us from having some, a Bible with air in it. We have the truth. Our problem is not our Bible. Our problem is you and I obeying what the Bible obviously says. Are there parts that are hard to understand? Yes, but that's not our struggle, is it? You and I struggle with simply surrendering to the truth of God, the eternal God, in his eternal word to obey him and get the blessings thereof and get the glory to God therefrom. Let's just use our Bible and obey the Bible and tell the gospel from the Bible. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.